The one cardinal rule of this nasty business we call show. There are three T's in entertainment. I told Raquel those three T's. Talent, teeth and tits. Now, Raquel's only six. She'll be seven in November. So she's really only fully developed in the talent department right now. But she's doing her best with the rest. I mean, I'll show her. Give the world a big smile. Like they can't keep their eyes off you. Then thrust forth your bosom like a cockney songbird. Thrust. Right before she goes in for an audition, I'll say to her, Raquel, call her to attention like. And she just stands there, looks up at me and whispers, teeth and tits, mum, teeth and tits. <laughs> now, I don't want to overstate my case here, nor do I want to whinge, but it has to be said. It's not easy being a single mother, especially at my tender age. Gym slip, mummy. <laughs> Rag, if I kept the gym slip on a little bit tighter, I wouldn't have ended up wheeling little Miss R in her pram, rather than doing something a little more appropriate for a woman my age. I mean, I was 19 when I had her. She's six now. Six years on my own. I've no family now, and as for the gentleman in question, he seemed to think of his role largely in terms of an anonymous sperm donation conducted under slightly less hygienic conditions than usual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the silence from that man is deafening. I mean, he would never send his daughter a brass farthing in child support. <sighs> to be honest, I'm not quite sure where he is now, since initially I met him on holiday. Raquel and I are friends. Honestly, in fact, that's what I say to her. Think of me as your best friend, Raquel. So I don't want her to be shielded in any way from the truth, because knowledge is power. And I think with a little education, she could improve vastly. And let's face it, smart girls get more, and in my case, stupid girls just get more than they bargain for. Child rearing, such as it is, you just got to be firm and communicating one syllable commands, and the rest is down to breeding and grooming, let's face it. Child stars, yeah? The only difference between a prize poodle and Vanessa Rudgins is the length of the ringlets. <laughs> I think with a little discipline, I could put Raquel's natural maturity and outgoingness to use. I mean, I want her to be the best she can be. This could give her focus. Once I learned of Raquel's feed for panto and chaperone things on top of it, I thought, well, fuck this for a game of jolly buggers. That is more than I earn at Primark. So I made a decision. Quit my job to concentrate on Raquel's career. Although it has to be said, as her agent and manager, I'll always be working harder than she does to promote her synergistically in the media and aim for full career development. But right now, I've taken the money Raquel's nan left her and paid for two and a half weeks of evening classes in media business management. And I'm going to put the rest in our relocation to Collier's Wood. Because let's face it, Raquel really wants to be a star. We can't stay here. You have no idea how energised I am. I am completely happy spending my day teaching Raquel to sing, to dance, and even some elocution and fencing on the side. <laughs> I finally feel like a mother. I read. Like books. Makes them happy, makes me happy, and fuck it. I'm clever now. You gotta believe that. I can read hard books. Fucking Shakespeare. Whatever they say about me, they're not gonna say I'm not clever now. <coughs> Rehabilitation. It's not enough. They know you'll never do what you did again. If they wanted that, they put up fucking cameras everywhere you go. Then watch. 
and knit you just as you're about to do. They could do that if they wanted. Just look at fucking Big Brother. Nah. In here, it's the other way around. In here, what they like to do is set up cameras inside your own head. So you're watching yourself. So what happens if, say I'm at a pub, and I'm not a complete Roman, and there's this girl there. She comes up to me maybe, says, you look lonely. I am. I'm here, alone. No friends. Nope. I'm a lone ranger, me. I'm travelling incognito. Fancy coming back to my place? Sure, love. Let me just ring my probation officer and he'll observe us through a window from a parked car. See what I mean? You've got to believe I'm clever now. Eight years ago, the police were saying I was barely literate. Like I was some kind of fucking wolf boy they found living under a rock. I've got one-on-one -on -one teaching in this place. You don't get that at fucking Eton. That's why I'm in the papers still. Because I don't deserve it so good. One bloke wrote a letter saying, One could say it's a shame he had to kill someone to get an education in this country. That bloke was in the garden. One could say. It's always the fucking garden, isn't it? Raquel and I have been learning about this industry the hard way. Through Christopher Biggins. <laughs> this is after Raquel got cast as the littlest darling sibling in Peter Pan at the Basingstoke Hamlet. <laughs> Christopher Biggins may have been on eye at the bloody Claudius, but he's also a right shit. He's the size of the garden shit, and as camp as a row of tents. And seeing as his wardrobe consists solely of caftans, he's tent like all round, really. Don't get me wrong, the man has talent, he also has teeth and tits. <laughs> but he's an integral part of the finished performance as Captain Up. Although I dare say he's getting paid a fuck lot more than my Raquel, so he can afford to be talented. I already suspected that Mr. Biggins might bear a grudge against my daughter, because she doesn't have to uh, sweat at it like someone who, let's face it, is going to be doing panto for the rest of his life, when my Raquel pulls a Gwyneth as she accepts her Oscar. I already suspected that, just as she was about to make her entrance for the big plank number, that it was going to be war. I didn't even smile at her as I said, tea and tea, Raquel. And so she greets, and she frosts, and all eyes are on her. And so naturally, Mr. Biggin shouts out, Excuse me, does this child have the palsy? So at that point, I leapt up on stage and said, Excuse me, I think Mr. Biggins is trying to upstage my daughter. Later, backstage, wrapped in a caftan, he, he catches my eye in the hallway and says to me, Look here, you woman. Don't you dare try and cross me like that again. Look here, you woman. As though that were a bad thing to me. As though I weren't already more man than Christopher Biggins will ever be, and more woman than he'll ever have in one tidy package. But that's what he said. Look here, you woman. Don't you dare try and cross me like that again. <laughs> so I said, Mr. Biggins, I wouldn't try and cross you with Michael Palin and a skilled team of shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I think fully aware of the irony that Peter Pan helps both Raquel and myself to grow up. Raquel learned to hold her own against the best in the business. And I learned 
that you don't have to have an affair with the lighting designer. Although, after certain intimacies had taken place, I could ensure that Raquel had a brighter spotlight than begins at all times and places for the rest of the run. <laughs> it's a virtue to establish a uh, good working relationship with the stage crew. That is what giving 110% is all about. <laughs>